What's up everybody? Welcome to Southern Life. On today's video, we're going to show you guys the damages that the city of Bonita Springs had due to Hurricane Ian. Highlighted here is Bonita Springs city limits. We're going to back up a little bit and show you that it's perfectly between Fort Myers and Naples in the southwest corner of Florida. It is a great place to live. And we're going to show you guys the areas that had the most damage and some areas that had absolutely no damage. So the areas that had absolutely no damage or very minimal damage are these gated communities like Bonita National Golf Course, Palmera, Village Walk. All these communities that are east of 70 half 5 had very little damage due to Hurricane Ian. In the past, this right here is the Imperial River, and in the past, the Imperial River had the tendency to flood these neighborhoods back in here, north of Bonita Beach Road, and some areas, like for example, right in here, off of Bonita Beach Road, Imperial, flooded for weeks after Hurricane Irma, about five years ago. However, Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Ian were completely different and the areas that were affected were not the same. It used to be called Citrus Park but now it's got a different name. For the most part these mobile home parks were not really damaged. There's another park called Imperial Harbor where there were some damages and on the north end this little creek here called Spring Creek did cause some flooding in the back but it was very insignificant compared to other areas. Now I did make a map that shows you guys the areas that were damaged the most, but just so you guys understand what Bonita Springs is, before we get into this video, you can see you have a few barrier islands. Now all these islands had storm surge of about 10 feet. So everything here along the coast had at least eight to 12 feet of storm surge. All these areas were really damaged, however, it's a very small percentage of the city's landscape. This mobile home park right here is for the most part completely gone with some of the mobile homes just being pushed against the mangroves here. So the areas of Bonita Springs that were damaged during this storm, you're going to be able to see that in the color coded map that I made. So let's take a look at a few areas in Bonita Springs and see how they were affected. The first area we're going to look at is the area that was hit the worst, which is along Hickory Boulevard. As we head north along Hickory Boulevard, the first thing you'll notice is that the Lee County Sheriff's Office has put up a post that was initially used to let people who were only residents enter this area. You can see that there was sand on the road and that the storm surge not only brought in water, but also sand over the streets. Again, this area saw storm surges in the range of 8 to 12 feet. That means that the vehicles that you see on the road now would have been underwater and floating away. For the most part, real estate properties here are starting in the millions of dollars, and the vast majority of these properties, thankfully, are not full-time residents. These are mostly second homes or homes of people that are very wealthy and will be able to rebuild. It is, however, very sad to see one of the most beautiful places in Southwest Florida in this condition. Keep in mind that this is an island and on the left is the ocean and on the right is a canal. And even over a month after the hurricane, debris is still floating into the Gulf from this area. You can see that the salt water has destroyed not only the property, but even the vegetation is discolored because the salt water kills most vegetation with a few exceptions like coconut trees, an area just south of Fort Myers Beach and is absolutely one of the worst hit areas in Southwest Florida. But of course, like I said, not all of Bonita Springs was affected by this hurricane. This is the area that was affected the worst. Now this area here is north of Bonita Beach Road, and as you can see, the Imperial River pushed the storm surge from the ocean into these communities. And these areas here, on the west side of Bonita Springs, 
had a lot of damages. Let's go in there and explore that. Four to six feet of water entered some of the homes in this community that were low-lying. That means that everything inside of these houses was completely lost. You're looking at a community where people lost every piece of furniture they had, and the drywall in the houses will have to be removed in some cases above the four-foot line. It means that these homes will become completely uninhabitable until the insulation in the drywall is replaced. So you can assume that this area of Bonita Springs, a lot of these homes are older and they're people that have owned these properties for many years. That means when they bought these properties, they weren't exactly that expensive. So while these are not exactly poor areas, they're definitely not the richest people in town as well. And unfortunately, a large percentage of the homes in this area are occupied year-round, which means that these are people whose lives were completely destroyed due to this hurricane. And as you can see here, all of their possessions are out by the road. These people had to take all the things inside of their homes and put them outside by the curb in a lot of circumstances while working 40 or 50 hour work weeks coming home in the afternoons to work on their properties. The people in this part of Bonita Springs must be exhausted and really just overwhelmed by this situation. It really is heartbreaking for me to see this since it's a community that I'm very familiar with. This is what this part of Bonita Springs is dealing with and this has never happened on this scale. Most of the storm surge here entered through the Imperial River, a beautiful river that has, unfortunately, the ability to cause storm surge damage. This area here is called Bonita Bay. Now, I had a customer who showed me some photos, and some parts of Bonita Bay had about two feet of storm surge inside the homes. However, we were not able to access this area because it is mostly gated. If you do not have a code, you cannot enter this community, therefore we have not been able to cover the damages inside of Bonita Bay. But as you can see, Bonita Bay is almost a quarter of the city's landscape. Huge area right here. Now there's a little corner here, and this is uh, Spring Creek. Let's take a look at what happened in Spring Creek. Now I will tell you that in this area, the storm surge reached in some places about 8 to 10 feet, which means it was right to the roof of the homes. Let's take a look at what took place here in this area of Spring Creek. The water came 8 feet above the boundary of the canals, which means that most of these mobile homes in Spring Creek had water just about to the middle of the windows. You can see here a mobile home where the storm surge came in and collapsed the structure as the water entered the building and then flowed through it. Everything inside of these mobile homes will be lost and they'll have to pretty much strip them down to nothing. You can see here the water line right to the middle of that window. That means that the water here destroyed a lot. Spring Creek took a huge hit. Other than the larger homes that are second stories and above or raised up on stilts, they were saved from the worst of the destruction, but anything that was on the ground level would have had a severe amount of water enter it. You can see most of these houses have an upper level where the living area is, but houses like this that are older, they had a lot of destruction. And I can say that the Spring Creek area is one of those areas that got overlooked because it's kind of hidden behind Bonita Bay. You really don't go back there unless you're going to that neighborhood. So it's one of those situations where a lot of bad things happened, but not too many people are aware of it. You can see here that there's insulation, drywall, and personal possessions, all of which are gonna have to be replaced before these people can return to living their lives normally. Spring Creek is another area where even people are living in older mobile homes so this is not a rich or affluent area. A lot of the people here are living up north and they have perhaps a single mobile home that they can come down to in the winter to get away from the snow. So despite the fact that they're snowbirds, they're definitely not super rich people. These are normal people who are losing a lot and a lot of them are elderly. 
The situation in Spring Creek is definitely heartbreaking. Another community that I'm very familiar with, I know the people here, and I know what they're living is a complete nightmare. As you can see here, people's entire lives are on their front lawns. The next area we're going to look at is south of the Imperial River, a little bit further inland. Let's take a look at how some of these communities around the state streets, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Tennessee, let's run up in what we call the state streets and see how this area fared. Most of this area had a couple feet of storm surge. It means that a lot of people here suffered lots of damages on their properties. Let's go into this area and see how this area in the center part of Bonita Springs was affected. This area here had storm surge from the Imperial River that caused a lot of people to lose, well, just about all their possessions. And again, the same process as everywhere else. This area, we know with the Imperial River having the tendency since Hurricane Irma to overflow and cause a lot of flooding. But it's interesting to note that with Hurricane Irma, the flooding came from far inland, mostly rainwater. In the case of Hurricane Ian, it came from the ocean. So Irma and Ian were very different storms and the damage that we're looking at here is from storm surge coming from the ocean and in this area I noticed a lot of people were digging through the garbage but most of this garbage anything that was touched by storm surge is eventually going to corrode. That includes vehicles, appliances, furniture, anything that's touched by that salt water it's pretty much guaranteed to corrode. This area is not again a wealthy area. These are normal areas, normal communities, and these people are going to have to continue their lives, their work, and their family, despite the fact that they've lost just about everything they had inside of their homes. People have to return to these conditions. A few areas that are a little bit closer to the rivers and the creeks, they definitely had more damages. And this area, again, is not unfamiliar to these damages since during Hurricane Irma, the Imperial River did cause a lot of flooding, but the immediate areas that were affected during Irma and Ian are completely different, with Irma having more of an effect far inland and Hurricane Ian having an effect a little bit closer to the ocean means that there's not much overlapping on the areas that were affected the worst from the storm surge of Hurricane Ian and Hurricane Irma and its flooding through the Imperial River. Nonetheless, the Imperial River, while a beautiful area, it has proven to be a horrible area to live nearby if you're not able to afford rebuilding. Well, here is that map that I told you guys earlier on in the video I would show you. The areas in purple had really bad damages and the areas in yellow had considerable storm surge. This should give you an idea of which areas in Bonita Springs were affected the most. And this is just a map that I created based off of me driving around Bonita Springs. So there's no real uh, equation to this, but it should just give you an idea of the areas that were hit the hardest and the areas that were kind of spared. You can see the Imperial River highlighted all the way to Interstate 75. And of course the communities far east of 75 they really didn't have these really bad storm surge problems. Wind was not a huge factor in Bonita Springs. There were a few little areas where like mobile homes had damages or a tree fell, but they're not like areas where the wind did a lot of damage. Bonita Springs mostly dealt with storm surge. And that's kind of a weird thing that the winds were not huge, but the storm surge was. Hurricanes can be interesting. Now, of course, for Hurricane Irma about five years ago, the areas on the east side of that yellow had it really bad and it would have been more, much more extensive. So you can see that each individual hurricane has its particular characteristics. And it all has to do with wind direction. It has to do with the exact landfall of the hurricane, uh, many other factors. Each hurricane is different from the next and they don't all affect the same areas. But this should give you a general idea of what took place in Bonita Springs. I would definitely say that Hurricane Irma left a lot of flooding, but Hurricane Ian left a lot more destruction.